Hey, welcome back everyone to a special episode of Team Building Tips on the Educational AD Podcast. We'll be back with uh, all of our guests on today's special episode, but first let's hear from our podcast sponsors. We want to welcome our newest sponsor, Final Forms, to the Educational AD Podcast. Final Forms is the industry leader in registration for athletic directors, but you got to know this, Final Forms is more than registration. Final Forms is a team, it's technology, and it's a service for schools to help with things like compliance, communication, and provide risk management solutions. Final Forms helps your stakeholders with mobile accessibility, along with reminders for parents about policies, physicals, and forms for student athletes. Uh, it can also help with team communication, attendance, and certification for coaches, and for ADs, it can help with eligibility, rosters, and all the reports associated with being an athletic director these days. It's time that you talk with a team that's walked in your shoes. Take the next steps to find out what Final Forms can do for you and go to finalforms.com forward slash Jake for more information. Once again, go to finalforms.com forward slash Jake to find out exactly what Final Forms can do for you and your athletic department. We also want to thank Violet Defense for their support. Violet Defense is dedicated to protecting our world from germs by bringing the power of UV disinfection to everyday spaces. Their patented technology enables them to harness the power of the sun to incorporate ultraviolet light into products and environments like never before. Whether you're ready to implement existing products or if you'd like to explore researching and developing a custom deployment of their technology for your school, Violet Defense has the solutions and the experience you need. Go to violetdefense.com for more information about their great products. We also want to thank Sideline Interactive. You know, it's becoming harder and harder to fund an athletic department these days, but Sideline Interactive's indoor scoring tables and video boards can generate $10,000 or more every year while also creating excitement in the gym and the ultimate game day experience for your student athletes. Go to sidelineinteractive.com or call 832-786-0302 to schedule a live web demo and see their tables and boards in action. You can also email them at sales at sidelineinteractive.com for more information. That's sales at sidelineinteractive.com and find out exactly what their fantastic products can do for you. We also want to thank Wall of Fame by Vital Signs. You know, they are on a mission to bring your school's legacy to life. They have a variety of interactive touchscreen video consoles, along with an extensive library of templates to make it easier than ever to recognize the athletic achievements of your students, both past and present. For ideas on how to showcase your school's diverse history, along with your proudest moments, go to vitalsignswalloffame.com or learn more and get started with your own digital Wall of Fame tribute. Call them at 614-981-3589 or you can email them at sales at vitalsignswalloffame.com. That's sales at vitalsignswalloffame.com. We also want to thank Huddle for their support. Remember at Huddle, we power sports. Over 180,000 teams, including some of the best in the world, use Huddle to help their teams and athletes play better. Huddle is the complete performance platform. They have online tools, mobile and desktop apps, smart cameras like the Huddle Focus. Of course, there's analytics and a whole lot more. Huddle's built for every level of play from club and youth programs up through high schools and colleges, and even the pros are using Huddle to help their teams perform better. You're in pretty good company with over 6 million users, including your student athletes, a lot of their parents, and the coaches of the college and university teams you're trying to get to recruit your kids. If you want to find out more about what Huddle can do for you and how your school can become a Huddle school, go to huddle.com and talk to their professionals. Remember, at Huddle, we power sports. 
We also want to thank Hometown Ticketing for their support. Hometown Ticketing is the leading digital ticketing provider to schools and colleges. You can find out more about what Hometown Ticketing can do for you and your school by going to hometownticketing.com. Hometown Ticketing, simple and easy online ticketing. And we want to thank Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack. Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack are a quick, easy, and affordable way for you to collect comprehensive data that allows you to evaluate and improve your entire athletic department. Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack also connects you with the 95% of the parents and the student athletes who really love your program. And it gives them a voice to help demonstrate the importance that a quality athletic experience has for them. Go to athleticsurveys.com and check out their testimonials and then give them a call at 1-800-738-6466 or you can email them at info at athleticsurveys.com to get started. If you've never used a survey to take the pulse of your parents or your student athletes, you're really missing out. Talk to the folks at Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack. They will show you how to take your athletic program from good to great. Hey, welcome everyone to a very special episode of Team Building Tips on the Educational AD Podcast. Uh, we actually have three pros with us today. I'm going to introduce them in just a second. But the theme of this Team Building Tips episode is the interview process. We're going to talk about some key things uh, that coaches or ADs um, should be providing when they are interviewing uh, for a position or maybe ADs when they're interviewing a coach. Um, we're going to talk about the resume. We're going to talk about the letter. And of course, we're going to talk about the actual interview. So let me go and introduce our guests today. Um, first, I want to introduce uh, Pam Lancaster. Pam's a certified master athletic administrator. She's the athletic director at Auburndale High School in Central Florida. She's a longtime AD. She's a member of our FIAAA board of directors. She and I presented together at, at the state level, and she's kind of an expert on using TikTok to promote teams and athletes. Uh, you might want to look for her on TikTok. So uh, Pam, welcome to our special episode. Thanks, Jake, for having me. And thank you for the plug there. <laughs> oh, no, you, you, she's, I mean, some of her TikToks get thousands and thousands of uh, hits. I uh, also want to welcome a good friend, Shay Collins. Shay is a certified athletic administrator and she's the director of student activities at Midlothian High School in Virginia. Uh, Shay and I met, uh, you know, like a lot of people do now uh, uh, in, in LinkedIn. Uh, she was a guest on our podcast, uh, just does a great job for her school and with the Virginia Interscholastic Athletic Administrators Association. Shay, welcome to this special episode. Thank you for having me. I appreciate the opportunity. All right. Well, we're glad you're here. And our, our final guest today is a, uh, a very good friend, John Scromolo. John is a certified athletic administrator. He's the district AD for Clay County in Northeast Florida. John is uh, kind of our in-state and even I would dare say national guru for uh, branding and promoting your school. Uh, John, welcome to this special episode. Jake, happy to be back and uh, excited to talk shop with Pam and Shay. And I will second that, that uh, Pam's TikTok keeps me going most times. There's a lot of really, really good ones. You need to check her out. <laughs> yeah, that's that's got to be a, a NIAAA workshop coming up. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's go and get started. Um, what we're going to do is just kind of go round table. And uh, Pam, you're going to start first. What are some things when you're looking to, you know, say interview a coach um, that you look for on either the resume or their letter of introduction? You know, what are some key points that always catch your eye and you say, boy, this is somebody I want to bring in for an interview? Well, and that's important too, because I always look at that letter of introduction or that resume as the very first impression that, that, that we get of this individual. So I look for it to be concise, um, detailed, but concise. Um, I look for their experiences that they have listed, the highlights, um, any internships, if it's a coach who maybe they've coached with or 
have they had head coach experience? And then, of course, I always look at the end um, at their references. I like to see what kind of references they have, you know, in their um, resume. Yeah, uh, I, I think those those references, whether they're provided initially or later, um, you know, can can really make or, or break that candidate. Good stuff. Great. Shay, how about you? What are some things that you're looking for as you scan that resume or that initial letter of interest for a position that you're hiring for? I definitely look at kind of what Pam said, but also look at the gap in time of coaching. So had they coached five years and took a break? Are they coaching now? Are they with um, what's called your travel or your club leagues and things like that? Because that's also important to look at timing. How much time can they commit to my program um, that we're asking them to do? As well as looking at the reference portions, because I've gotten to a point where I've called reference before, which I try to call every time. Or I will call, like if I see a person who is hiring, is looking for a position as a coach, but they don't put their athletic director's name down and they're coaching for that school, that's a red flag to me. So I'm going to call that athletic director because I probably know them and say, hey, you know, do you know John Jones is interviewing for a job for me? And they're like, oh, no, I had no idea. So when the AD's name is not there, then I know this indication that's probably not somebody I'm going to probably pick or even call for an interview because right then they're not upfront with where they are and what they're currently doing. And then I've also had um, applications where the reference is a parent of the person and I've called. And so I asked general questions and they get to tell me some personal and say, hey, you know, how do you know the person? Oh, they're my son or they're my daughter. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, so it's important to check the reference part, but also even though you're looking at their letter of intent or resume, or you're looking at the cover letter, you still got to get a little bit deeper to their experience and where they are and what they're currently doing. Cause I think a job now versus a job 20 years ago is important because students are, are, are different now and the things that we're asking them to do is also different as well, so. Oh yeah, boy, I've never had that in my experience. Uh, you know, I've had ADs who had a son or daughter that coached for them and they were very upfront about it, but <laughs> never had that uh, personal parent uh, reference before. John, you yeah. know, you're in a different position than Pam or Shay. You know, you've, you've been a building AD, uh, but now you're a county AD over a number of different schools. You know, what are some things that you're looking for when you're reading that letter or, or going over that resume? Oh, well, thanks, Jake. Well, no one loves you more than your mom, right? Um, <laughs> so I, 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 for this podcast episode, I'm going to give a perspective as to what I look for in athletic director um, interviews and resumes and these types of things. Uh, Pam and Shay have, have, have done a great job talking about coaches. So I'm going to talk a little bit about ADs. So uh, one of my professors back at Flagler College, I'll never forget her. Her name is Paula, Hol Paula Hollenschock, and she taught an entrepreneurship class. She had this phrase that has always stuck with me, and, it, and it's good for the interview, but it's also really important for your resume and your cover letter. Cover letter: Be bright, be brief, be gone. So, so that, that's what you want to do. I'm looking for people that are uh, very intellectual, and you can, you can gain that information in a very short amount of time. Um, I think a lot of times with resumes, people feel like um, uh, quantity is more is more influential than quality, and that's not the case. Um, a lot of people try to give a um, like their, their CV as opposed to their resume. We really don't need to know that you were the 12 U All Star back in 18 you know 1968. That really is not going to have any effect on the job whatsoever. Um, that was one of my biggest frustrations uh, as a, as a school-based AD. I, I got to do a head football coaching um, hire one time. And there was, a, there was a, a resume with 14 pages all the way back to the Pop Warner Championship, which had, which had no effect whatsoever on whether or not I was going to hire that individual. So be bright, be brief, be gone. Um, and then secondly, you want to be able to eloquently show your multifaceted leadership ability. So what I mean by that is try to think about all of the different challenging situations you could get in as an athletic director. Um, I've dealt with risk management. I've dealt with contract review. I've dealt with, obviously, parents. That's something that, that you're going to have to do. So finding a way to tactfully uh, kind of orchestrate all of those things into a clear and concise form, one page. That's my challenge to you if, you, if you're going to go interview a resume needs to be one page because you're going to be on a stack of 35 other others. 
So you want that one page to, to really pack a punch. Well, I, I really want to um, say thanks for emphasizing that. I'm not in the game anymore, but I remember, you know, at, we would advertise, send us your letter and your resume. And sometimes if it was on a website, I would say, do not send coach packets, you know, these big manuals that uh, coaches would put together with their plays and, and all this stuff. Hey, don't need that at this point. Uh, that would many times just, I would put that person's uh, application aside because number one, they couldn't follow directions. So uh, yeah, Jake, Jake, real quick, I'll just, just add on to that. If when you're creating your resume, if there's any doubt whatsoever of whether or not something should go in, you probably shouldn't put it in. <laughs> things that are very important or things that you're extremely proud of, you're not going to have any doubt in your mind that needs to be in my resume. Keep all the other stuff out. That'll come up in conversation. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, great, great stuff. Uh, we are visiting with Pam Lancaster. Shay Collins and John Scromolo on a special uh, resume interview episode for Team Building Tips. We're going to take a real quick break and hear from one of our sponsors. This is the Educational AD Podcast. We want to welcome our newest sponsor, Final Forms, to the podcast. Final Forms is the industry leader in athletic form registration. But you need to know Final Forms is more than just registration. Final Forms is a team, it's technology, and it's a service for schools in the areas of compliance, communication, and even risk management. Final Forms can also help your stakeholders through mobile accessibility, uh, reminders about policies, physicals, and forms for athletes, can help coaches with team communication, with attendance, and for ADs, it can help with eligibility, with rosters, with coach certification, and all the reports that come across your desk. It's time for you as an athletic director to talk with a team that's walked in your shoes. Take the next steps to find out what Final Forms can do for you by going to finalforms.com forward slash Jake for more information. And once again, that's finalforms.com forward slash Jake and see exactly what the final forms team can do for you and your athletic program. Hey, welcome back everyone to this special episode of Team Building Tips. We're talking uh, resumes and interviews, and uh, we're gonna talk um, now about things that our uh, panel of professionals look for when they are interviewing a coach or possibly an AD candidate. So Shay, let's start with you first. Um, you screen the resumes, you're bringing in your finalists or you know, maybe one. Um, what are some things that you really want to see, you want to hear during the actual interview? One of the things that I do once I scan them, I actually will interview head coaches and assistant coaches. I know a lot of time people leave the assistant coaches to the head coach, but I don't want that assistant coach meeting me for the first time when I walk on the field. And they're like, who is that person? Where does she come from? And so I take it upon myself to interview head coaches and assistant coaches. So what I'm looking for is I can't expect an assistant coach to be as enthusiastic or uh, as versed as a head coach, but definitely a head coach to tell me how would they handle situations, students, parents, practices, when things don't go right, when they're right, but when they go wrong. Um, game management, also practice management with our student athletes, because as we're getting out of school time, what are you doing to engage your student athletes? Are they just coming out there? Is everybody just do what they want to do? Is there a structure, not just in practice, but also structure in the game? So I want to hear that from that particular person. I know now that we've been in COVID for two years, well, still is whatever we are. Um, people are so relaxed, but I look at how they're dressed too. You know, you don't have to dress with suit and tie, but try not to come in there with a t-shirt and jeans and, and shorts on, you know, because that I, I want to see, like, did you take the time? Did you know that you were coming to see me today? You know, or did you just got up and came and said, oh, I'm just going to this interview. I, I, I know I'm going to knock it out. So whatever. Um, and that speaks to I had an interview with um, I just hired a soccer coach and a couple of them came in dressed. And I remember socks about one of the guys. It was Halloween socks. I thought it was so cool. My first bit thing was cool because he likes to wear his color socks. He didn't want to shine, be taken from him. But I thought it was really cool. And I remember that about him. 
but I ended up hiring another person, but I really, really wanted to hire him and I couldn't hire him. As it would have it, the person I hired had to leave to come back to Florida, emergency, and I hired him. And he is doing an awesome job for me. So like he impressed me by just, just his dress alone was impressive, but he also had experience, but he wanted a head coaching job, but just didn't have it. So he ended up getting it. So time just turned around and it just happened. He's doing an awesome job. So I look at that, but I also look at um, eye contact that you're making with us. You know, do you know what you're talking about? Do Are you waiting? Are you looking around? Do you, are you not familiar with what I'm asking you about? And if you can't answer a question about how you would handle parent-student conflict, then I have a question with hiring you. If you can't answer that just off the bat, I'm not saying be correct and have a long drawn out answer, but if you can't give me any kind of suggestion on what you would do, then I'm probably not gonna hire that person. Right, um, again, I'm trying not to put in my two cents, but so many times, you just want to hear that they can express themselves and they can put two sentences together uh, rather than, you know, the actual content, but uh, I'm going to shut up now. Okay. John, um, same situation. You've done the screening and now you've got the candidate or candidates in there. What are things you're listening for, looking for in that interview process? Jake, I would say the biggest thing that I look for in interviews is depth. Okay. Everyone can tell you the what. They can tell you that I have to do compliance paperwork. I have to deal with parents. I have to have a social media platform. That's all well and good. We're going to hear that 75 times. The, the, the biggest separator in an interview is the how. Illustrate a picture of, of yourself as a leader. Illustrate a picture of what it would look like with you sitting behind the athletic director's desk. And that is, what is your mission? What is your vision? But more importantly, how are you going to carry out that mission and vision? How are you going to build a team of, of coaches that all buy into the vision of the organization? Um, and through that, you need to be able to provide tangible examples. This is much tougher to do if you're a first year athlete, uh, don't try to get, become a first year AD. But if it's not your first AD job, use tangible examples of, hey, in this experience as an assistant coach, I did X, Y, and Z. And then in this experience as a varsity head coach, I did X, Y, and Z. And then as an athletic director, I've implemented X, Y, and Z. Um, and I think you're really separating yourself from the field when you give tangible examples instead of, well, I think I might want to. That's the other thing, too, is you, you really, really, really have to be confident. Uh, and that's something that sometimes takes a lot of time to build, practice, um, have, your, have your family interview, at, interview you at home. If, you, if you're not very comfortable speaking in front of people, I would highly advise you start speaking in front of more people because that, that's going to build that confidence. Um, and then also, I, I really like Shane's answer about dress. Another one of my favorite quotes that I kind of live by, and a lot of the ADs in Florida can, can attest to this because they mainly see me in a suit, is dress for the job you want, not the job you have. And, uh, and I, I try to live by that every single day. But you won't, it, it is so true, you only get one first impression so you want to make sure that, that it's your absolute best. Uh, I, again, spot on with uh, those comments, especially I love the ones about um, your, maybe you haven't been an AD before, but you've been an assistant coach and you've probably been a head coach. So using those examples and applying what you know to that next challenge, you know, very, very cool idea. Pam, how about you? You know, you've got a great program there at Auburndale. You know, how do you make sure you're hiring great coaches? What sticks out for you in that interview? Well, I'm going to piggyback off of right away. And I do agree about the dress um, part. Um, and I, I agree. It's the little things. It's that first impression. Granted, the resume and everything is the first impression. But the first time you meet uh, this individual, um, I know Shay mentioned about the socks. I remember I did an interview um, before and I was just impressed when and he did have a suit, I mean, he'd have a suit on, he had a, a shirt and tie, but it matched our school colors. And to me, that shows there's some research that has been done. And I think that's so important that before you go into the interview, you've got to do a little legwork. If you truly want that job, not only are you going to, you know, dress for the job you want, but you've got to put in the effort and do some research. What's the school enrollment? Um, if you're um, applying for the basketball coach or something like that. Know a little bit about the program. Have they been struggling? Are you walking into a, you know, a, a championship team program? You know, all those little things I think are extremely important. And do they have a passion for athletics? 
And you can tell um, talking to a person, how they um, talk about the sport they want to coach or, or if you're you know, coming in as wanting to be an athletic director. And one of the questions I like to ask right, right off the bat after they tell us a little bit about themselves is, you know, why do you want to be our varsity basketball coach? Why do you want to be the coach at Auburndale High School? Or, you know, why do you want to be the athletic director of, you know, such and such school? And um, because that'll tell you a lot. And again, going back to what you, if they can't answer you straight out about why, then they haven't put a little thought in it. Are you just looking because you want a job or do you really want to be a part of that school and that culture? And I think that's that research into the school that you're, and it might be if you're going through a lot of interviews, that's a lot of research, but I think it'll pay off in the end. And we sitting on the other side of the table can read through that to see how much, you know, it's very impressive if they already know about your school and, and that you can tell they've done some um, research and showing that passion for the sport and um, just being able to handle situations like John was saying and, and Shay was saying, um, I even like to throw out and give them some situations. So if you have a parent that's upset over playing time, what, you know, put them on the spot. How would you, you know, create some scenarios and, and ask them to respond to that and just see what kind of um, ways, you know, how they would go about that. And again, it might not be the right way, but that they can come up and that's where the mentoring on our parts come. If you decide to hire, especially if it's a young coach and you're giving them a chance, there's going to be some mentoring on our part that, that we would have to do and everything. So those are just a few things that I, I, I look for in interview. Um, I wanted, can I add to that real quick? Um, I was going to say too, that along with, um, you know, seeing what they look like, can they answer certain questions and, you know, all those types of things too. I think one of the things to also be mindful of the, who you have in the interview. I never go into interview with a coach by myself. I always have either an assistant coach from another sport, one of my high volumes, um, sports or like football or basketball, or I have an administrator to come in with me. I never go in by myself, but I also, if it's, if it's an assistant coach, I always have the head coach as long as the head coach is still around. Um, or I'm hiring both coaches at the, you know, at the same time. But I always make it a real interview. When I was at my last high school, I hired for a cheer coach. I was hiring for a cheer coach. And so the, the young, young lady worked at the school and it was myself and it was another person in there. So when she left out, she emailed me and she was like, thanks for the interview. I didn't think it was going to be a real interview. And I'm saying like, what does that even mean? Like you didn't, what, were you, what, what do you think I said we have an interview and gave you a time to come in and talk with me? So I have always had someone else with me because it, it's, it never, I don't want it ever to be said, well, she didn't give me a job, but it was always somebody else who always helped me with maintaining and or deciding should someone get a job and not just depending on me. And, and so when they leave out, it's like, oh, someone else besides her is going to determine if I get the job or not. So I just wanted to add that. No, that's, that's a great, great point. I'm, I'm glad you added that. Um, I, I think it sometimes it depends on, um, for me, um, you know, what the position was. If it was an assistant, I'd always try to have that head coach with me because it was their assistant that they were kind of bringing to me. Uh, but a great, great idea. And Pam, your point about um, doing research on the school, I can tell you for a fact that the last two positions that I was hired as, the AD at Palmer Trinity and then the AD at McClay, I got that job into a large part because I did my homework and I was able to talk about their team success. I was able to talk about names of returning players. Uh, that's how important that job was for me. So uh, great, great stuff. We're going to be back with our final segment of our special uh, interview episode uh, in just a minute. Please stay with us. This is Team Building Tips on the Educational AD Podcast. We want to thank Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack for sponsoring the Athletic Director's Toolbox segment of the podcast. Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack are a quick, easy, and affordable way for you to collect some comprehensive data that allows you to evaluate and improve your entire athletic program. Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack also connects you with the 95% of the parents and the student athletes who really love your program. And it gives them a voice to help demonstrate the importance that a positive athletic experience has for them. Go to athleticsurveys.com and check out their testimonials and then give them a call at 1-800-738-6466 or you can email them at info 
at athleticsurveys.com to get started. If you've never used a survey to take the pulse of your parents or your student athletes, you're really missing out. Talk to the folks at Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack and let them show you how to take your athletic department from good to great. Welcome back, everyone, to our special episode on uh, resumes uh, and interviews for coaches and ADs. Uh, our three experts, uh, Pam Lancaster, Shea Collins, and John Scromolo, have just really knocked it out of the park with suggestions and tips for someone that's looking for a job in athletics. We're going to wrap things up with um, a final thoughts segment. So, John, let's go ahead and start with you. Uh, once again, you know, you've been a very successful coach, building AD, and now very successful county AD, overseeing a number of schools. Um, what, what else can you share with our listeners that's going to help them the next time they're interviewing? Sure. So, I, Jake, I would say that it's very important, going back to what I talked about, about being able to illustrate your vision for the organization and how you're going to implement that vision. Um, you want to be able to do that with confidence. You want to be able to do it with passion. Um, everyone in the room during your interview, when you walk out the door, they need to. Ha they, there needs to be no doubt in their mind. You're the you're the person for the job. Um, so so, and I challenge you, everyone that's listening, you have to be able to get there in your own special way. Some people are very energetic. Some people are very analytic. Um, and, and and different schools need different types of leaders. So it really just depends. Uh, everyone has mentioned doing your homework on the school about the school. For instance, uh, we always talk about this in, with our admin teams here in Clay County about how if a principal is a really good instructional leader, but really struggles with organization and property and maybe maybe ESE laws, then they're going to hire someone who's strong at property and ESE laws, right? So so it's very important to to when you do that research to find how you are the missing puzzle piece for that athletic department and then leverage all of the things that you know with passion and energy so they know that when you walk out the door, they're not hiring anyone but you. A great, great point. Uh, and again, you might they might ask you that specific question. What kind of experience do you have in that area? And you could, you could just be very honest. Well, I, I don't, but you know I know – you know, John or I know Mary at this high school and, and I would immediately, you know, reach out to them or you've done your research and you know who the pro is in Clay County. And you say, I, I see that, you know, Pam Lancaster, you know, is in charge of this. I would reach out to her right away. So, you know, yeah, great, Jake, great I, point. I, I would also piggyback to what you just said about the fact of be ready to convey how you can accommodate their needs. So, so even if, even if that was not the case and you did not know someone, one of my biggest strengths is I'm a very fast learner. You only have to tell me to do things one time, right? And, and as a principal or as, a, as an athletic director, if you're a coach or an AD, how awesome is that that I only got to tell someone something once, right? That, that's a huge strength. So, so that's very good. Uh, thanks. Thanks for following up with that. Great stuff. Uh, Pam, um, what are some things that we haven't covered so far from your perspective that you think would really be helpful to that uh, prospective AD, prospective coach on their next interview. Right. And I do agree with John um, wholeheartedly about um, you want to be able to have a vision for the program, especially if you're coming in uh, to maybe a, a, a team that's struggling. Uh, we want to hear what is your vision? Are you just going to come and do the same thing, you know, and, and um, we want to take it to the next level. How are you going to, what's your plan to get uh, more student athletes involved in your program what's your you know and, and those are the kind of questions to ask and everything and and importance of communication uh, being a good communicator not only from coach to athletic director but coach to student athlete coach to parents um, all of us have been there where you have a coach that, that that wants to stay away from the parents and stuff like that this day and age you've got to be you know you got to go head on you've got to be that communicator to the parents and and, and do a good job with that I would also say, um, and not be afraid to further your uh, professional development, whether as a coach or an athletic director, be willing to do that and just become better at what you're doing. I think that's so important. And I said this on when I was on the podcast, it seems like many, many moons ago, but um, don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, 
and I've been, I mean, this is my 21st year being athletic director, but I, I'm still asking questions. If I, you know, find, need to find out something. Um, and as you said, I'm, I'm there to help out anybody who has questions, but I think that's important too. So the vision and the communication and, and asking questions, and um, those are just really important things and having that vision and going in like you are real confident. And I think John used that word also, confident of what you're doing. And I think those are all things very important. And then finally, um, one of the questions I do like to ask um, is, uh, and, and at the end to kind of give them a chance to respond is um, something like, uh, we have several good applicants here, including you. Um, what can you offer Auburndale High School that maybe others cannot? And you've got to be ready to, you've got to sell yourself. You've got to, you know, tell them why you would be the better candidate than anyone else. And you don't have to know who the other candidates are. You're there to sell yourself and just be ready to answer that kind of question. Cause that's one of my favorite questions to finish up an interview. Oh, no, great, great point. Uh, you know, all three of you have talked about being confident and, and I think it's, I don't know how fine of a line it is, but again, you want to come in confident, not too cocky, because uh, people are going to sense that too, but uh, you know, coming in and too low key and not selling yourself, which all three of you have talked about selling yourself, that's not going to give that interview team or that interview person who's ever conducting it confidence that you're the person for the job. So sell yourself. I love that expression. Okay, Shay, uh, bring us home. Okay, uh, what are some things that uh, we haven't covered? that you think would be, uh, or things that we've covered that you think need to be covered again uh, and emphasize that our uh, listeners can benefit from? Um, well, we won't repeat the same ones, but definitely confidence. But I also think bring something with you. I'm not asking you to bring a whole booklet, but bring either your resume, a, a practice plan or something with you, especially as a varsity coach, so that I know what you're trying to do because you, you can tell me what you're gonna do, but show me. That shows that you prepared yourself for the interview. You look something up, as we mentioned previously, you know something about our school, you know something about the programs, you know a couple of the successes, wins, and or losses that, that happen. You know the schools that we're playing. So it's important to be prepared as a coach so that you can prepare your, your student athletes for whatever game they're coming up against. Um, besides, we also talked about just dress and how you look, but also be prepared to, as Pam said, answer certain questions. A couple of questions I always ask is if I was being coached by you, what are three words your kids would say or your athletes would say about you? Three things right now. And if they are stumped like five minutes and can only give me two, I'm not bringing you back. Because you should know what it's like to be you. Because if you're pro projecting that to a student athlete the first day you meet them, they're gonna already have an opinion about you. You don't have to coach them for five games. They're gonna have an opinion the first time you open your mouth, the first meeting that you have, the first meeting with the parents, first meeting with the student athletes, the first practice you have, they're going to already have that already. So you got to be able to tell me right then what is three things, three words. I don't say sentences. I said, don't give me a sentence. I need words that would describe you as an individual, as a coach. What would your students say about you right now? And I had somebody say, I only could think of two. I said, oh, just give me the two that you have. I'm saying to myself, you are not coming back anyway. Just give me the two. We're good, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you're not coming back just give you, me two you just you, know? you just answered the question yeah yeah like... just you're good just give me two yeah. you know so um I look for that but I also look in um like presentation and gestures while you're sitting there because people fumble and they like hands tapping they writing stuff down and things like that um and I think that's important because if you can't flow now if there's something that happens that day of how are you going to flow then how can you think of what what if, and I do a lot of what ifs, I guess probably all of us on here as leaders, we do that because you got to have a plan. Like it, it just started raining all of a sudden. What are we going to do? It just started thundering and lightning. What are we going to do? We can't stand outside and wait for it to strike us. We got to, you know, have a plan of action. So if I, if I throw you off a question, then what is your next plan? Like, what are you going to do? How can you think on your feet? Because everything that's on, on the paper, it may be good, but it, you know, it may not flow that way. You know, so, um, and this is just a follow what I do after I've hired someone. I know we talked about techniques, but what I do after I've hired someone is I call all the new coaches together and I give, and I go over a little, um, a little newsletter, just qu quick points, information, my information, the principal, the nurse, the, the trainer, um, some things about COVID, of course, we're in that now, but some things to handle parents, 
schedules and things like that, I go over that with them to give that in their hand because a head coach is supposed to be your leader mentor. But what if they don't? What if they go on so fast and they forget to tell you little things? You have that handout to refresh at least my cell phone, my email, the principal, you know, the finance lady, you know, just little things like that that will help you to be successful. Virginia, we're Virginia High School League. Where to find your schedules at? Where to go look for that? Because they change all the time. You know, so stuff like that that I always give them after I meet with every, after I hire them actually. And then I meet with them myself. So they, again, they know who I am and what we present, represent for our school. So I think that's important as well. After the hire, I know we're talking about what are some things to bring, but that's what I do after hire as well. Now, that is some great stuff. And you you covered a lot of ground in there, which is fantastic. I love it. <laughs> um, and you you shared, you know, that question that you asked the applicant, you know, what about this? Pam and John, I'm going to give you a chance to share in just a second, you know, what is that one question or what is a question, specific question that you ask, uh, but I'm going to toss out my own two cents here very quickly. You know, when you go in for that app, uh, for that interview, and they finished with their questions, and the principal, the AD, whoever is conducting the interview, they go, do you have any questions for us? You need to ask questions. You need to have some questions yeah. to ask. If you say, I can't tell you how many people have come in, even for head coaching positions, you go, nope, I think you covered it. And <laughs> I'm just, I'm pretty much saying, okay, thanks a lot. You know, we're, you're not going to be the finalist. You need to ask questions about, you know, administrative support, about enrollment, about assistant coaches, about budget, you know, don't ask what the salary is, save that for later. But uh, yeah, you need to ask questions. So uh, Pam, I'm going to jump up to you. What's one question, uh, maybe not one of your secret questions that you can't reveal, but uh, what's one question that you ask uh, that might not be the ordinary type of question when you're doing an interview? Well, I think I'm gonna go back to what I started with because I, I'd like to know why, um, and, and, and then I ask for examples too and stuff like that. Why do you wanna be a coach at Auburndale High School? To me, that's so important because um, again, and you can tell if they have to think about it, if they have to, you know, and if they sit there going, well, I've, and, and we have, we have quite a few, we have quite a few alumni who are coaches and it's neat for them to say, I, a bloodhound, I want to, I want to be here. I want to give back. I want to, you know, and, and all that kind of stuff. And, and, um, I just think that's important to get that kind of thought process out of them. Um, and just kind of explore that a little bit because that opens up the door to the inspiration part and the commitment part and the passion and everything that follows after that. So to me, that's a, it might not be a secret question, but it's an important question for me. No, absolutely. Okay. John, how about you? What's a question that might be out of the ordinary that would help our listeners the next time they're in an interview? I got two. I know it's supposed to be warm, but I got two. So the first one is, um, is where do you, and this is not out of the ordinary, but it is, it's one of the most important, where do you see yourself in five years? I really want someone that is ambitious. Um, and, and hopefully they tell me something really off the wall that most people in the room think they're not going to achieve because that tells me that they are ambitious and they're not fit, they're not scared to take risks and, uh, and they're going to do everything they can to, to always be moving forward. The second question would be um, kind of like Shay said, what are the three things to describe you? My, my thing would be, what are the three things you are not? Uh, I think because because I think if you really tap into someone's mind and see how they are gauging what, what they should and should not be, if you, if you do that. Uh, that, that, that would give, it takes them a little bit of time to answer that question. Give me three characteristic yeah. traits that you're not. Yeah. Wow. I like that. I like that. I'm going to steal that. <laughs> Oh, I, I stole it from someone else, so go for it. Three things you are not. Yeah. If I was to look at you, what are three things you are not? Yeah. I love it. I'm going to use that. Yes. Yeah. And, and that that tells you who they are by what they share. Great yeah. stuff. You three have just been so fantastic today. Um, I can call you up anytime I have a question, but for our listeners, if they want to reach out and get a hold of you, pick your brain a little bit, What's the best way that they can get in touch with you? John, let's go ahead and start with you. Uh, I'm real big on Twitter. You can uh, send me a message on uh, Twitter at Coach Stromolo, S-G-R-O-M-O-L-O, -O -O, uh, or always send me an email, john.stromolo at myoneplay.net. Okay. 
Pam, how do uh, our listeners get a hold of you? All right, the best way email is um, Pamela, P A M E L A dot Lancaster. That's L A N C A S T E R at Polk, P O L K dash F L dot net. Okay. And Shay, how do our listeners get a hold of you? Um, Twitter at 10 S Collins. 10 S Collins. We have Go Midlow, but I'm 10 S Collins. But um, also <laughs> on IG, Melothian High School Sports. Um, we're there as well. Um, then email uh, Shay underscore Collins, S H E A underscore C O L L I N S at C C P S net dot net. And I'm also on LinkedIn. So either way, and email is great. For our listeners, Shay and Pam and John, all three very active on Twitter. You know, you can find them and uh, the ways they promote their schools and their student athletes and their teams on Twitter. Um, Thanks uh, to all three of you for um, being a part of this uh, special team building tips today. I know it's going to be a popular download uh, for the podcast. And for our listeners, all of our interviews are uploaded to the Educational AD Podcast YouTube channel. Thanks for listening today. Come back again next time for another episode of Team Building Tips and just about every single day for something on the Educational AD Podcast. Before we go, we want to thank our good friends at Huddle. Remember, at Huddle, we power sports. Over 180,000 teams, including some of the best in the world, use Huddle to help their athletes play better using video and analytics. Huddle is the complete performance platform. They have online tools, mobile and desktop apps, smart cameras like the Huddle Focus. Of course, there's analytics and a whole lot more. Huddle is also built for every level of play. Club and youth teams have been using Huddle for years, and high schools and colleges probably are the most um, frequent users of Huddle, but the pros are using Huddle as well to help their teams play better. You're in pretty good company with over 6 million users, including your student-athletes, a lot of their parents, and the coaches of the college and university teams that you're trying to get to recruit your kids. If you want to find out more, about what Huddle can do for you and how your school can become a Huddle school, go to huddle.com and talk to their professionals. Remember, at Huddle, we power sports. We also want to thank Wall of Fame by Vital Signs. Vital Signs is on a mission to bring your school's legacy to life. They provide a variety of interactive touchscreen video consoles, along with an extensive library of templates to make it easier than ever to recognize the athletic achievements of your students, both past and present. For ideas on how to showcase your school's diverse history, along with your proudest moments, go to vitalsignswalloffame.com or to learn more and get started with your digital Wall of Fame tribute, call 614-981-3589 or you can email them at sales at vitalsignswalloffame.com. That's sales at vitalsignswalloffame.com. And we want to thank Hometown Ticketing, the leading digital ticketing provider to schools and colleges. You can find out more about what Hometown Ticketing can do for you and your program by going to hometownticketing.com. Hometown Ticketing, simple, and easy online ticketing. We hope you've enjoyed this special episode of Team Building Tips on the Educational AD Podcast. If you have suggestions on future episodes and topics that we might cover, uh, please reach out to me at jakestouchdown at gmail.com. That's jakestouchdown at gmail.com. Thanks again for listening to Team Building Tips and the Educational AD Podcast.